Well, 35 years ago, I was hired as the National Director of Communications for the Canadian Jewish Congress, the Parliament of Canadian Jewry, uh, a very high profile organization that unfortunately uh, was, was dissolved in 2011. And my boss at the time, Jack Silverstone, called me into his office and said, I have your first assignment. We are going to go to Ottawa. We're going to talk to the Minister of Justice and find out where they're headed with the prosecution of Nazi war criminals in Canada. And uh, I didn't know much about the dossier yet, but boy, did I learn a lot over the next, the following 10 years when I had that job. Uh, Bernie Farber's with me. Bernie uh, was the CEO of Canadian Jewish Congress before it dissolved in 2000. And 11, we worked together for a decade. We worked on this dossier. And the reason I'm talking to Bernie is because of our Speaker of the House, now former Speaker of the House, Anthony Rota, who uh, brought a uh, uh, someone who fought, against, uh, fought for the Nazis, who was uh, Ukrainian, uh, and brought him into the House of Commons and with uh, Vladimir Zelensky, the president of the Ukraine, and they got a standing ovation. Anthony Rhoda has since resigned. It's shameful. So let me start. Let me get right to the point, Bernie. What are your thoughts on this on this occurrence? Well, remember, I also have a personal connection to this, Mike. And you'll recall that my father was a uh, was a survivor. Um, I am the I am the son of a survivor. My father was a sole living Jewish survivor of his small uh, Polish village in uh, along the eastern border of Ukraine called Bochka. Uh, 750 Jews perished there at the hands of the Waffen SS. Um, and let's be clear. I mean, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rota made a huge yep. international blunder. Uh, and I remember I was watching, as many people were, the the um, Zelensky uh, address, which was mind mind shattering, un unbelievable. And then after the address is over. Uh, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to him introduce this man who's in the gallery. He says, it's a Ukrainian national who fought against the Soviets from 1941 to 1945. I'm like, what do you mean fought against the Soviets? The Soviets were our allies. The people who fought against the Soviets, they were called Nazis. Yeah. So I, then I thought to myself, no, I, 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 pro I, I probably didn't hear this right. But as it turned out, sadly, I, I, I heard it right. And uh, I think our listeners should 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 know have a kind of a, an understanding that this is really history 101. You know, during World War II, there was the Axis side that was the Nazis, that was the Japanese and the Italians. The Allies were the Americans, the Brits, the Canadians, Australian, New Zealand, uh, and from 1941 on the Soviets. Um, within the Soviet Union uh, and, and within Ukraine at the time, Ukraine has decades of history fighting for its national independence. And when Hitler shows up, there are some Ukrainians who saw this as an opportunity to maybe fight uh, under the Hitler banner in order to get Ukraine back. All of this doesn't matter because they fought under the banner of the Waffen-SS. This was the 14th Galicia Division of the Waffen-SS. They made a blood oath to Adolf Hitler. They took their orders from Nazis. They were Nazis. Many Waffen SS members, as in my father's case, were involved in, in uh, uh, you know, uh, death camps and, and, and concentration camps and killing units. Um, these were villains. These were Nazis. And the thought of, of, of lauding one in our house, meaning our house of government, the House of Commons, made me literally sick to my stomach. Bernie, you know, we were working together. I started working at the Canadian Jewish Congress in 1988, okay? That was a long time ago. At the time, it was a few years after the Duchesne Commission that was formed to uh, bring forward the legislation that Brian Mulroney brought forward to, to find Nazi war criminals in Canada, prosecute them, to deport them. And that was a long time ago. And then years and years went by. And of course, we don't even know. Uh, we don't even question it's not an issue. Like if we were when we were Canadian Jewish Congress, you and myself, Jack Silverstone, and many others would go to Ottawa regularly. We'd meet with government officials. We'd press them to find Nazi war criminals in Canada and to deal with them. Yep. I don't think if we were if we were around still today, I don't think we'd be going to Ottawa pushing it. And then, who would have thought that a ninety year old Nazi war criminal would not only be alive, but he'd be sitting in the House of Commons getting a standing ovation? Ninety eight. Ninety eight. That's Look. a ninety eight. <coughs> We have known about this division since even before uh, 
the Duchesne Commission. The history of this division uh, is, is, is well known. These were, there were upwards to 5,000 Ukrainians who fought under the uh, swastika as, as, a, as members of the Waffen SS. After the war, they surrendered to Britain. Uh, they, they, they went to Britain and Britain didn't want them. So they coerced Canada into accepting them and they told Canada that they did some investigations and they were all okay. They come to Canada legally, Mike. They came in. They, they walked in legally. They were they were they were not considered by our authorities to be uh, 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 members of a criminal organization, although they were. Although this criminal Waffen SS was found by the Nuremberg War Tribunals to indeed be a criminal organization, Great Britain somehow coerced Canadian officials, and that's how they ended up in our country. Flash forward to 1985, we have the Duchesne Commission. Jack Silverstone, who unfortunately is not with us because of technical issues, but Jack at the time was not just our uh, executive director, he was also legal counsel to Canadian Jewish Congress, and he along with Erwin Kotler represented Canadian Jewish Congress before the Duchesne Commission. We had representation there, and we made very strong arguments that this that this division, this Waffen SS division, um, ought to be uh, you know reclassified as a as a criminal division. The uh, Shen did did not buy that. His view was that the division as a whole cannot be seen as criminal. There might be certain members within the division that did criminal things. That was his that was his call. We believe he was wrong then. We believe he was wrong now. But the reason that Mr. Hunka is in this country is because of those decisions that were made. And by the way, he wasn't the only one, Mike. I mean, by 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 kind of conservative standards, we believe that upwards to 2,000 members of this division, 2,000 members came into Canada, made new lives, brought up families, and we don't know how many of them were actually directly involved in war crimes, but we have to assume some were. There, there's just, uh, whether it was Babi Yar, which by today, September 29th, is the 82nd anniversary of the massacre at Babi Yar, and the Waffen-SS were wholly involved in shooting Jewish men and women and children, making them dig graves and shooting them in the back of the head, 33,000 over two days, the largest modern massacre in human history. This division, not particularly this division, but this Waffen-SS of which they belonged, was involved in that massacre, and today's the 82nd anniversary of that massacre. Bernie, we've had a lot of experience with government. We never saw, in the 10 years I've been in Congress, we never saw, something like this would have never happened. Um, who was asleep at the wheel here? Was it Rhoda Stapp? Well, it as I understand, Rhoda? this is, a, I'm surmising, okay, but my understanding is that a, a um, constituent of, uh, of the speaker, of the ex-speaker, came to him and said, my father's a Ukrainian national, and he would love to be in the gallery to hear the speech. Rota should have given that name to his staff. I, we don't know if he did or he didn't. I'm, a, I'm a kind of a surmising he did not. <coughs> Took it under his own authority and, uh, and, and did the invitation. Certainly the PMO did not know about it, nor should the PMO know about it. The speaker's office is con totally and completely independent. Um, and my sense is that you know, had his staff been aware, they might have checked them out. By the way, it took only a simple Google search to figure this one out. Well, that's that's what bothers me, because the fact is that Jewish groups were smart enough to figure out who he was immediately, yet well, Rota's not, staff not, wasn't. No, actually, that's not exactly correct. Um, there is a, uh, a journalist that works for the forward, Lev Golishem, I believe his name is. Okay. He was the one that broke the story. Okay. Okay, he broke the story. That night, that Friday night, yeah. um, I saw it Saturday morning, Okay. Um, and I read it, and I thought to myself, yeah, that's exactly what I thought when I heard the, but I, I, as I said, my sense was he just must have made a mistake. Well, there was no mistake made. Huh. And, and then, to the credit of the uh, friends of Simon Wiesenthal, our good friend Michael Levitt, yeah. uh, immediately put out a statement, a strong statement. But Nabrith followed after that. Siege followed after that. Um, you know, and it became an international incident, and it still is. This is this is not going away. This is wow. um, <coughs> Mike. I think what we can think about is 
it, this is here. It's happened. It's horrible. Uh, it made me sick. But is there any light that we can bring out of this darkness? Is it possible, for example, that the two monuments in Canada, uh, and possibly three, there might be one in Quebec, uh, memorializing this particular Waffen SS unit? Is there any potential possibility that through mo moral suasion, that MPs at the House can, can ask for a motion that these monuments be taken down in the same way that we've Good begun point. taking down statues of Sir John A. Macdonald? Because yeah. we're we're re-understanding history now, and we we, yeah. we know what John A. Macdonald did. Yeah. This should be a no-brainer, Mike. Yeah. Take these monuments down, honoring the Waffen SS. It's, yeah. it's a shanda that they're here in this country yeah. on our on Canadian soil. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. My final question for you, because I know you're nursing a bad cold. So I, I am. It's terrible. On with me, um, in 1995, you gave me a call and said, Mike. There's this guy named Steve Rombaum. He's a private investigator from New York City. And he's he's hunting down war criminals on his own. Steven Rombaum came to Montreal, looked up people in the phone book. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's how so-called, I mean, he says easy it was in some ways to find a Nazi war criminal. And isn't it interesting that decades later, we have a farce like this happen? Well, look, the, the, the truth of the matter is that Canada really never, never gave a fig about Nazi war criminals. They pretended to do something near the end when they were being embarrassed uh, by 60 Minutes and by CBC and others uh, during that time in the 90s. Uh, so there was some action. The last Nazi war criminal died a year and a half ago. That was Helmut Oberlander, who, by the way, was a translator I should say, by the way, alleged Nazi war criminal, because even he was never found to be an actual Nazi war criminal. He was right. found to have lied mm -hmm. about what he did during the war, which was he was a Nazi translator for an Einsatzgruppen unit, a killing unit that murdered 44,000 Jews. Right. Now, he said, I never drew a weapon. I was a, simply a translator. Well, I'll leave it to your listeners uh, and your viewers to determine what the translators do for killing units. Just yeah. think about that. Yeah. Well, Bernie, uh, thank you for joining me. And you know, one thing that comes of these things is my my goal is, uh, you know, the, some of the proudest moments of my life were working for Canadian Jewish Congress and some of the things you and I did together, I'll remember the rest of my life. And it's important to remind people. Uh, and now this is an opportunity to remind people, especially our younger generation who probably don't even know that there were Nazi war criminals resident in Canada and all the efforts were made. Uh, for us to remind them. So let this be a life lesson. Bernie, get better soon. Thank Thanks you. Thank you. Me. Thank you for calling me, Mike. It was uh, it's a pleasure always to, to work with you and it's a pleasure to work with you again. Great having Bernie Farber as my guest.